The discovery by curiosity of rocks made of pure sulfur was surprising given the lack of volcanic activity in Gale Crater. But now sulfur nodules from the Paleo Dead Sea may offer an explanation with a profoundly important twist on this episode of Mars Guy. After NASA announced this discovery two weeks ago, I presented an episode in which I used the archaic term brimstone to describe these rocks without realizing its possible significance. The word brimstone apparently comes from the old English derivation of burnstone, which describes the fact that pure sulfur burns. So the phrase fire and brimstone probably comes from this fact. What I didn't realize at the time is that brimstones, or more technically referred to as elemental sulfur nodules, are found eroding out of sediments deposited by ancient Lake Lisan, the precursor to the Dead Sea in the Middle East. And thanks to the idea that these so-called sulfur balls are somehow related to the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, they're sought after collector's items. But it's the possible connection to Curiosity's discovery that got my attention. As I noted in episode 172, elemental sulfur is common in volcanic settings like this one I sampled in Chile. Fumaroles spew a range of sulfur compounds that alter the rocks, leading to the accumulation of bright yellow elemental sulfur. Given the ubiquity of volcanoes on Mars, elemental sulfur should be expected, but Curiosity is not on a volcano. It's been driving up a mountain of sedimentary rocks produced by some combination of water and wind-driven processes. The rocks do have minerals with sulfur in them, including gypsum, a hydrated calcium sulfate that could be important to the story of the discovery of the sulfur stones. And I'm referring to them here as sulfur stones, as some on the team are calling them, rather than rocks. Here's Mars Guy for scale. This is a subtle distinction to help reflect the observation that they occur in relatively small pieces that have a smooth nodular appearance in most cases, rather than the look of rocks broken from a layer of bedrock. Curiosity has not observed any bedrock layer of elemental sulfur, so it's possible that the stones were formed as isolated nodules that were later buried and are now eroding out. Given that Curiosity has shown that lakes existed in Gale Crater in the past, a possible origin like the Paleo Dead Sea sulfur nodules gets really interesting. That's because it's been found that sulfate reducing bacteria in the Paleo Dead Sea probably produce the sulfur nodules there. These organisms use gypsum in their metabolism and produce elemental sulfur as a waste product. This explanation for the sulfur stones observed by Curiosity obviously would make them a profound discovery, but there are obvious differences between them and the Paleo Dead Sea sulfur nodules, like their size and interior color. And many of the sulfur stones on Mars look very porous. The origin of the holes is not clear. Comparable holes don't seem to be a feature of the Paleo Dead Sea nodules. Curiosity spent about six weeks among the sulfur stones before departing to explore different rocks further up Getty's Vallis. During that time, the idea of biomediated sulfur nodules like those of the Paleo Dead Sea was not considered. These features on Earth are little studied and little known by members of the Mars science community, including me, until I was alerted to them by viewers of this channel. Now I suspect that among the seekers of biblical fire and brimstone around the Dead Sea will be scientists in search of life on Mars.